I spent a number of years as a theist, and then a number of years as an agnostic, and then finally ended up as an atheist. I recently did a series of videos. Uh, I, I have done three so far. The initial a video addressed, hey, can intellectual, rational people be friends with religious people? And I'm talking about specifically in the libertarian community, voluntarist, anarchist, whatever you want to call it. And I was basically saying, yes, we can. Some of the things I said, I think came off as a bit condescending, which many of the things I do tend to do that. It's a personality flaw. Um, shame on me, but they, they did. And a friend, a good friend, watched the video and didn't love it so much. And he responded with 10 points and then added a few more. And then I responded to those. I spent an hour responding to those. And then I suggested, hey, let's get on and chat together. And so we did. That was so when we chatted together, that was part three. This is part four. And my general point was that it is irrational to believe in something for which there is no good evidence, for which you haven't been persuaded in a rational way. And my friend Joel said, there is a rational reason for believing in Christianity, for even believing in theism. And so I asked for evidence. And I, I believe that in our video, you tell me if I'm wrong. If you're interested in this kind of stuff and you like listening to these chats, if I'm wrong here, let me know. But I understood Joel's two arguments to be, number one, quantum physics. And he said some very intelligent stuff about it. And I've got to just bow out and say, I know nothing about this. Um, I, I, I can't even enter that arena. Like hats off to anybody who understands that stuff. I don't. And so I'm going to skip that one for now because my understanding is that it's like this really intelligent, deep, uh, topic that would take years to even get a grasp on for a guy of my IQ anyway. And so I'm going to have to let that one go for now and go on to his second point, or maybe it was his first, whatever it was. His point was the evidence that he provided that there is a, a deity, theos, a God, is that the world had to be, had to come about in some way humans had to come about in some way. And everybody's open to offer ideas about how that happens. That's, that's how science works. As you say, I'm noticing this thing. There's a world. I'm here. And how did, that, how did that come to be? How did I come to be in this world? And how did the world come to exist? And then everybody gets to pop off with their ideas. And somebody might say, well, I think it was, I don't know, that, that the uh, trees turned into people within an eight minute period and it was because loud music was playing and then scientists would look at that and go that's a crackpot theory that's ridiculous we all look at everybody's welcome to look at it and go yeah that doesn't work i don't think that's it and then somebody else comes up with an idea people look at that and go, yeah i don't think so so people who are interested in that area and another little point of uh, disagreement that joel and i had joel's understanding was that all intellectuals. If you are an intellectual, you should be interested in the origins of the world, humanity, etc. And I would say no, there are hundreds of thousands or millions of topics that an intellectual might choose to be interested in and investigate. And the origins of the world, that's one of them. Interesting one, cool. Like, I'm glad some people are really into that. I'm more, I don't know, maybe more of a modern day, hey, how do we make the world a better place tomorrow kind of guy. But that's definitely not a better thing to be focused on than the origins of the world. I just am not, not into it that much. So, but, but his argument was the world had to come from somewhere. People have come up with various reasons why it might have, and nothing seems to make sense. But the one that makes the most sense is uh, creationism, that there was a first, uh, he didn't say first mover, but there was something that created an intelligent uh, designer of the world. And since that's the best argument, the best hypothesis, if, if I can't come up with a better one, then we've got to go with that one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and question your detective work there, <laughs> whatever they said in Fargo. Um, I, I, I wrote down some notes. I made a little example here. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of writing this to, to Joel, or I'm, I'm going to say this to Joel and, and others as well. I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of an example to say that 
you can't you can't just say some people said that a is a reason for something some people said that b is a reason for something and if you can't come up with a better reason then we have to go with those two and one of those isn't a good one so let's go with the other one and it's got to be true or it's the most likely to be true no not at all uh, i think the truest answer can be i don't know like it's not my area and if there aren't anything any, any examples any any proofs that make good sense to a, a person who's basing their i don't know their examination on reason logic evidence if if there aren't any good arguments from any side then the appropriate answer isn't let's pick the best one of all the lousy ones kind of like government let's pick the best type of government democracy i guess it's better than a di dictatorship well, no, if it ain't good, don't use it. And so that's kind of my perspective. Here's an example, and this has really happened. Uh, about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, a friend and I were in, in uh, the Rocky Mountain Air region. We were out camping, and we'd only had one beer each, so this wasn't a drunk thing. And we looked up on the hillside two, 300 yards away, and we saw a, an unknown creature walking up the hillside. We both just looked at each other like, what's that? And I remember we even talked about it and it was walking upright and it was moving fast, like faster than a human could walk and it was standing upright. And so we thought about, well, what could it be? And some of the options for what that thing is or could have been that we saw would be a deer common in our area, elk, a bear, a human, Bigfoot, <laughs> or just unknown. We just didn't know what it was. Well, we, we looked at these possibilities and we said, well, number one, two, and three, the deer, elk, and the bear, um, they don't walk up hills on their hind legs. Like they might rear up for a little bit, a deer or an elk to butt antlers or, or something. A bear will rear up sometimes, but they don't walk around like that. So we had to kind of say, okay, this hypothesis of it being a deer, hypothesis of it being an elk, hypothesis of it being a bear, those aren't good arguments. Well, then another is it could have been a human, but I'm telling you from looking at it, it was just human couldn't have walked that fast and a human isn't covered in a brownish color fur. So I don't think it was a human. I'm really sure it wasn't a human or a deer or an elk or a bear. Well, it could have been Bigfoot. I, nobody's ever proven Bigfoot exists, but according to Joel's argument, if we've looked at the other possibilities and we've eliminated them, then we have to pick the next best one and we have to pick Bigfoot. Well, if you chose to say, yep, must have been Bigfoot, because it really, I don't think it was a deer or an elk or a human or a bear. Well, that's not, that's not how you come to conclusions. That, that's not how you decide things. It, it's not rational. It's not reasonable. It's not, you're not being an, a rational intellectual if you, if you come to conclusions that way. So just because you're pretty sure something isn't one, two, three, or four doesn't mean that it's number five. It doesn't even mean that it's anything that's on the table yet. There, that We saw a thing walking up a mountain, and I'm pretty sure that it wasn't a deer, an elk, a bear, a human, or Bigfoot. So it was obviously something that we just don't know what it was. But it was there. We saw it walking. We talked about it then. So I don't know what it was. And it's okay for an intellectual to say, I don't know. Like, that's really curious, but I don't see any good answers to it. Like nothing has persuaded me. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I was facing. And I don't, I don't know if I responded well to Joel. I'm trying to be respectful here, but, but I, I, here's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the thing that I said that was the most upsetting to a, a theist person was when I said that they can't be an intellectual. And what I'm wondering is that my definition of intellectual what is in fact very narrow. Maybe I should not have used that word. Maybe I was wrong to use that word and everything that follows from me using that word is therefore poisoned. Maybe I should have said a rational intellectual. Maybe that would have fixed it. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't claim that thinking of things that Bigfoot or God or unicorns or whatever, like you can't think that's a rational thing to think. And an intellectual person who is usually intellectual 
may think about these things, but you're not rational. Like you're not rational if you think that it was Bigfoot because there isn't good evidence of Bigfoot existing or God existing. And so until a rational argument can be given and not this, hey, we can't come up with a better argument, so we have to go with the best one we found up, thought of so far, that's not, that's not going to cut it. So that's just a quick thought I had. I'm going to continue thinking on what Joel said, and uh, I'm going to I try to think of a way maybe I'm communicating poorly. Um, I don't think I was heated or, or did things, you know, I don't think I was off base in the video, uh, the, the chat with Joel. One thing I did get wrong, I'd like to mention, or another thing I got wrong, um, at 21 minutes and 50 seconds, I... Uh, called uh, something that Joel was saying the fallacy of begging the question. And in fact, it was circular reasoning. Um, so I got the name of that fallacy wrong. I was, I was thinking of it incorrectly. I was wrong in that case. Uh, let me look at my notes here and see if there's anything. I just wanted to kind of do this a real quick video here, a follow up, and I might do another one or two and then maybe have another discussion with Joel or maybe Joel and I are just using the wrong words and not coming up with good enough definitions from the beginning. And maybe maybe someone else would be a better person to continue this conversation and try to come up with truth with which i i hope joel wants i know that's what i want i think we're just looking for truth so yeah just a little update just a few thoughts and uh thanks for watching i'm, I'm thrilled that you're interested in this kind of geeky stuff uh, until next time thank you and hey, if you'd be up for subscribing maybe sharing with a friend who'd be interested in this type of argument i'd certainly appreciate it <laughs>